So, just a few more phyla for us to talk about here. Um, so, the next one is one you're probably familiar with because uh, organisms in this phylum often are used as foods that people eat. Uh, and these are the mollusks. And mollusks, um, they have soft bodies, but they are often enclosed in a hard shell that they secrete. Um, the soft body is called the mantle. They move around with this uh, part that's called the foot. Um, and it's sort of they um, move and contract the muscles in that foot and sort of slither over the ground, pulling themselves along. Um, many of them, like I said, have a shell, but not all of them. Okay, so the mollusks include um, many aquatic animals, both freshwater and saltwater, but also some land animals as well. Um, and so that's an example. What is that? A Not a snail, but a slug. This is a banana slug. Okay, and you can find slugs, you know, they're around here in the spring, summertime. If you go out in your yard in the morning, um, you'll find them on like leaves and stuff. They have this um, sort of tooth covered tongue, this very rough tongue called the radula, where they basically scrape um, and cut through the leaves. Some of them that live in the water scrape algae off of rocks and stuff. Um, but you know, slugs can grow large. They can be this big, like a banana slug can be, you know, several inches long. Um, but again, that's their soft body. They have antennae. Um, also, the mollusks include some of the most complex of invertebrates, like the octopus. I'll show you a video at some point, maybe tomorrow or today. Um, shows some of the amazing abilities that octopus and other um, mollusks have. They can camouflage themselves um, to, a, to a great degree, really neat to see. Also, the bivalves are mollusks, things like clams, oysters, scallops, uh, mussels, things like this. They have two shells, that's what bivalve means. Um, and they are often filter feeders, okay? Um, you know, clams and mussels stuff, they basically suck in water that they're living in filter out little bits of food and squeeze that water out. Um, you know, so when you eat a clam, basically it's an invertebrate, and the inside, the part you take out, is sort of all the body systems in that little, little package there that you're, that you're eating, dipping in butter. Um, snails, snails are also mollusks. They, they secrete the shell. Sometimes people get confused. They think like the snail found that shell and crawled into it, like a hermit crab would. You know, hermit crabs come out of their shell, they can switch shells and so forth but not with um, the mollusks. They make the shell as part of their body. So it's sort of like a turtle. A turtle can't come out of its shell. Um, and so they have lots of different shapes of shells and so forth. And this is a nautilus, which makes a really interesting type of shell. Um, a conch, you can see the, the, the soft parts here. Yeah, you can see the shell there. So if you go to the beach and you're collecting shells, um, really you're collecting the um, the shells of mollusks that are no longer alive. So when you go to the beach, you find a shell from a mollusk that was once alive and it's no longer alive, but the shell sticks around for a while until it's eroded. And that's what you're picking up. Okay. Um, things like, you know, they do move. Um, you know, plants can move through the water. Some of them use like a jet propulsion where they squeeze water out and that sends them moving along the water. Uh, so they're kind of neat. Also in here are squid, are a part of the mollusks as well. That leads us with the last group, arthropods, which is actually a huge group. We used to go into some more detail about all of the um, classes of arthropods, but we don't really do that anymore. You know, the classes include insects, centipedes, millipedes, arachnids, and crustaceans. So that's a wide variety of different types of animals. Now, what did the root pod mean? We've talked about it before. What? Not quite close though. Yeah, foot. Okay. Arthropod means jointed feet. And this is because arthropods have an exoskeleton. So we know invertebrates don't have an internal skeleton. They have no bone. But arthropods have an exoskeleton, basically a shell around the outside, a hard shell um, that serves as protection and gives them structure. Um, but we know that 
Um, they're not just like a solid shell. In order to be able to move, um, they have some joints, some gaps between these plates of exoskeleton so that there can be some movement. Arthropods are 75% of all animals. So this is the vast majority of all animals on the earth that have been identified are actually arthropods. The biggest group of those are insects. And they go from, um, you know, this is a, a crustacean, this crab, food, lobster, crayfish, things like that. And you can see it's exoskeleton, its shell is there, but these areas that are white, um, those are the gaps between the, um, the plates of the exoskeleton that allow for movement. Just like in a suit of armor, you know, a suit of armor isn't like just two pieces of steel for the arms and legs, right? That you would have to walk like this, not very effective for battling. Uh, dragons and stuff, but there are gaps between each of those plates, like at the elbows, at the knees, at the shoulder, at the head, okay, that allow for some movement, and these um, arthropods have those same, same gaps there. We'll watch that probably tomorrow. Um, all right, so arthropods often go through these processes called metamorphosis, and there's two types of metamorphosis we'll talk about. One's probably familiar to you, one may not be. Metamorphosis is basically a change in the body structure of an animal. It's the definition. And so one type of metamorphosis is called incomplete metamorphosis. And an incomplete metamorphosis, it's basically each stage, just this sort of a bigger version of the um, last stage. So for example, the grasshopper, okay, eggs hatch into immature young, which are called nymphs, but they look just like a grasshopper. And to grow larger, that exoskeleton, that hard shell doesn't grow. Once it's formed, it sort of stays that way. And so periodically, these um, insects, they have to um, shed their exoskeleton. Okay, they have to basically break out of it. Once they do, their body is very soft because they don't have an exoskeleton. Then they can grow larger, and a new exoskeleton forms. And eventually they may molt again, and again, grow larger, and another exoskeleton forms until they reach their full adult size, and then they can reproduce again. So the stages of incomplete metamorphosis are egg, nymph, and adult. Catherine? Is the shedding of the exoskeleton similar to in the summer when you see the shell of the cicada? Yeah, that's what this is right here. I was over so I have here, this is the exoskeleton of, of a cicada, and you may find them in your backyard. I always find them like we had a wooden swing set, and you know my daughters would freak out because they'd be all attached to it. Basically, when it's time for them to mold, they'll go find a surface they can kind of grasp onto, and then they break out of the back of their shell. Okay? And what's left, you know, attached to your swing set or a tree or your fence in your yard, is just the exoskeleton. You can see that when you leave. That's right here, it's just brown. It looks, it's the exact shape of the insect, although there's nothing living in there, it's just the exoskeleton. And so you find these all around sometimes. And so that process is called molting. Shedding the exoskeleton is molting. And, Abby? Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, when you see a lot of these winged insects, like butterflies and so forth, or moths, and they come out, it takes a little while, their wings are sort of all collapsed, and they pump fluid into them, and they sort of straighten out, and they dry out eventually until they can actually... It seems like they were just growing yeah. every few minutes. Yep. See? Your hand up? Oh. They're, doing the, they're just stretching out their pinion muscles. Yeah. All right, anyway. Uh, the other type of metamorphosis is complete metamorphosis. Probably many of you in elementary school, did you raise caterpillars? Okay, so that was a version of complete metamorphosis. And complete metamorphosis basically have like a drastic change in the structure of the species, where it looks like almost two different species. And the stages you probably know are egg, larva, pupa, and adult. Whereas the egg hatches into the young, the larval stage eventually forms the pupa and emerges into the adult stage. But they look very different. And these 
insects that go through complete metamorphosis, what's the job of the caterpillar stage, of the larval stage? Yeah, you ever read that book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar? Right, they are very hungry. That's their job, is to, um, is to eat, is to consume as much food as possible to prepare them for the next stages. What's the main job of the adult version? Yeah, to reproduce, okay? So they have sort of different functions, and they do. So um, that's complete metamorphosis. So it's not just butterflies, I know we sort of think of butterflies. Um, flies go through the same process. What do we call the larva? Yeah, maggots are the larval stage of flies. They eventually metamorphose into flies. Okay, there's a little couple of chuckles. It's a butterfly family. He's embarrassed by his baby photos when he was a, a larva and then he was a pupa. No? Not, not that great? I thought, was, I thought it was okay. Sorry, it's hard to find metamorphosis comments, you know. Because butterfly mother leaves after. Yeah, they also don't live in a house or take photos, but it's sort of an overall idea, you know. It's, I know it's not maybe 100% scientifically accurate, um, but, all right. Sorry, Mark. All right, so uh, tomorrow I'll show you those videos that we just talked about. And we'll talk about